For the last part of this first module, we're going to look at some of the Cisco command line basics. Um, that is, just some iOS general knowledge, um, some basic, basic commands that you should be familiar with. We'll actually be expanding upon this in the next module, and in the module following that with respect to switches, so I uh, highly encourage you to stick it out, wait around, and we'll be talking more about these commands later on. So, some command line basics you need to know. Off the operating system on most Cisco switches and routers is known as the Cisco Internetwork Operating System, for short, IOS. Um, I Cisco IOS is a command line interface, so you'll be typing a command and usually either getting an output, or as a response, uh, the device will be configured in a certain way. There are three primary modes for IOS. In user mode, uh, the user can run simple informational commands. One example of this is show version. Um, there are a few other commands as well. Um, the next one we move to is the mode you'll be working in most of the time uh, for diagnostics and informational stuff. Uh, that would be privileged mode. And so uh, you can run advanced debugging, as I mentioned, diagnostic commands, and all the other stuff you can do in user mode, you can also do in privileged mode. To access privileged mode on a device, you'll type the command enable. This will bring you up to the privileged mode. Sometimes it'll require a password. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Finally, we have configuration mode, and in this mode, you can actually modify the way the device is currently running. Again, you can access all of the commands from the previous user and privileged modes, but in this case, if you want to access those commands, you have to prepend them with the word do. So, for example, if I wanted to issue the command show version, which is a user mode command, I can say do show run from a configuration prompt, and it'll run the command for me. If I want to access configuration mode, I have to type the command from enable mode from privilege mode, configure terminal. Unfortunately, you can't skip straight from user mode to configuration mode. So once you get to enable mode, you can type configure terminal, and you'll be able to actually modify the device's running configuration. The configuration uh, is stored in NVRAM. This is the startup config, and actually, um, the site is slightly mistyped. In routers, uh, the startup configuration is stored in NVRAM, but in switches, the startup configuration is just stored on the flash disk within the switch. Um, so not quite true there. Um, however, the true part of this, after the switch boots up, uh, this startup config is loaded into RAM. Uh, this is what's called the running configuration, uh, the, or the running config for short. Uh, both of these, uh, startup config and running config, are pseudonyms for these particular files that you can use when you're typing Cisco IOS commands. Changes made to the running configuration are applied immediately, so you should be very, very careful when you're making changes in config mode. Um, that's just you know a word of advice from somebody who's been doing this for a long time. Um, if you're configuring some device over the console, normally you won't have too many issues with being able to access the device again and maybe undo a change. However, uh, one thing I've very commonly seen is uh, somebody will be administering a switch or a router and will make a change that causes the user to lose connectivity to that device. And so the user now has no way to actually access the device, the user has no way to reverse the changes that they made, and the only way to really go about doing that would either to be to take a laptop with a console cable and uh, reverse your changes, or just to reboot the device and hope that you haven't written those changes to memory. Accessing the uh, iOS command line interface uh, can be done with several different ways. Um, the primary method uh, that we'll use for labs and so forth, um, and kind of the backup method for most actual system administrators, is via a serial cable. Um, this is done with a standard 9-pin serial cable. Uh, the default settings on most serial devices are 9600 baud, no hardware flow control, um, and the 8N1 specification there. Um, 8N1 stands for 8-bit ASCII, no parity bits, and one stop bit. Um, normally this is done with what's called a rollover cable that converts a DB9 connection into an RJ45 connection. If you're not sure what any either of these connections are or what I'm saying by uh, these sorts of connections, I'd encourage you look, uh, to look up Delta Bravo 9 and uh, RJ45 uh, on the internet to get an idea of what these connectors look like. This is very important. Um, you can also, uh, if you have IP access to the device, use a telnet session, which is in very insecure because uh, anybody who happens to be spying on the session can intercept packets and see exactly what you're typing and what the device is sending to you. On the other hand, secure cell shell is a little bit more uh, safe and provides a method of IP access that's basically almost entirely trusted by system administrators today. 
the switch views command line session as lines, and this stems from uh, back when routers first started out. Originally, telephone lines were used to configure the uh, router, and so what would happen is, if an administrator wanted to configure a router, they would dial in to one of these lines. And so uh, we keep the term line today. Uh, when we're, we said we call them virtual lines, we call them virtual terminal lines. Um, so we have a line, uh, a virtual line, dedicated to the console. Um, to refer to that on configuration mode, we can refer to that as line console zero. Zero being the line number. Uh, line numbers in Cisco IOS start at zero and go up. Um, say we want to refer to the Telnet or SSH sessions, however, these are called VTY lines. And uh, so in this case, the second command there refers to VTY lines 0 through 15. These will refer to the first 16 Telnet or SSH sessions to this particular device. Um, now, the limit notation on VTY lines varies from platform to platform and from iOS to iOS. So you should look at your specific device to determine exactly what limitations are there. There is also um, in place a context-sensitive help in iOS. Uh, you can get to context-sensitive help by pressing question mark at any point. Um, context-sensitive help is your friend when it comes to learning iOS. Um, you can press question mark at an empty terminal, for example. If you're not sure what you can type, uh, you'll be given a list of the commands you can actually uh, type at that given point. Or if you're not sure, uh, for example, what command you can type, for example, you want a list of all commands that start with the word show, you could type show, and then a space, and then question mark, and it will give you a list of every single show command on uh, Cisco IOS. Um, again, context-sensitive help is your friend when it comes to learning these new commands. This is uh, very important, and I encourage you to use question mark a lot as you uh, first start getting into some of these IOS. So now we're going to look at the available file spaces uh, in iOS. There are a few different ones. The first one we'll discuss is the onboard flash card. Normally this is referred to as flash colon. In some of the newer operating systems you'll see it referred to as disk zero colon. These two are interchangeable. You can use one or the other. It does not matter. Um, either way, uh, these are typically where the iOS image is stored, that is where the operating system itself is stored, and then it is loaded into RAM. Uh, you can also store backup configurations there. Again, in switches, this is where the startup configuration is stored. And if the device happens to have a graphical user interface, <laughs> kind of a redundancy there, I have GUI interface, uh, but if it happens to have a GUI, that GUI will be stored on the flashcard. NVRAM is typically, again in routers, where the startup config is stored, and so you can refer to it with NVRAM colon. System typically refers to RAM and is usually just referred uh, to the running configuration. You'll hardly see it used with any other files. You can also refer to files systems that are not necessarily on the device. Uh, for example, if you have a, a TFTP server or an FTP server that you'd like to access from the switch, you can type TFTP colon or FTP colon and it'll go out to those servers and pull files. Now here are some basic commands for file management that you should know when working with iOS. Typically the copy command is a very, very important one. It's a base command on almost all operating systems out there. Um, the copy command works much the same as it does on other one operating systems. You specify the source first, specify the destination second. Um, I've given some examples here. Uh, the first one, copy the running config, the, the startup config. This command, known as copy run start, is a very, very important command because it writes the running config to memory, so you don't load, it, don't lose any of the changes that you've made when the device reboots. Copy TFTP flash uh, will actually copy from some external TFTP server to the device's onboard flash memory. Now, in this case, we haven't specified an IP address or file names or anything. We've just specified the source and destination disks. And so what the switch will do is it will display, it'll prompt you basically for every single piece of information it needs to actually make this copy happen. In the second example, I've actually given all of the information in the copy command. Um, and so in this case, it wouldn't actually prompt me for any information. It would just go ahead and do the copy. Another useful command that almost every operating system has is a delete command. And so basically to use the delete command, you specify the path to the file, much in the same way that you see in that last example of the copy command above. Um, you can also use the force switch, which will basically say that, uh, basically not prompt you whether you want to delete a file. So by default, if you type delete on the iOS, the iOS will ask you, are you sure you want to delete this file? You can use force to delete and basically eliminate that prompt. You can also use the recursive switch to delete a bunch of files within uh, a single directory. 
Um, so for example, if I want to delete a directory full of crash information files, I can specify the recursive switch on that directory. All of the individual files in the directory will be deleted, and then the directory itself will be deleted. Um, typically, recursive is used alongside the for switch, um, otherwise it will prompt you for every single file in the directory. Erase is used on file systems to erase the entire file system. Um, erase is actually writes zeros to the entire file system, and so it's very useful. For example, when we want to erase uh, the startup configuration, we can use NV Erase and VRAM. Uh, erase can only be used on certain file systems. For example, certain types of flashcards can be used with Erase, but other types of flashcards cannot. Here are some older commands that if you've ever used iOS before, you may be familiar with. Um, write mem for the longest time was the standard command that was used on Cisco iOS to write the running configuration to the startup configuration. Cisco recommends replacing this with the respective copy command in the first case or the erase command in the second case. Uh, honestly, to me, this makes more sense in terms of the file system in general, and just, you know, it's cleaner. So on the CCNA, if you see uh, two of these options given, the second option is technically more correct, although both, op both options will do exactly the same thing. So here are some iOS status commands that you can use to basically monitor the device that you're on. Reload does basically exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it will actually just reboot the switch. It's a soft reboot. Setup will actually display initial configuration prompts. Uh, the device does this automatically when it does not detect a startup configuration. Um, and so if there is no startup configuration and the device boots and it detects that there isn't one, uh, it will display an initial setup prompt. You can actually rerun this setup prompt again at any time by typing setup. Show version is a very useful iOS command that displays version information and a bunch of other system st statistics. So for example, the device serial number, uh, the actual device model, um, the iOS that's running, as I mentioned, um, the amount of free RAM and free flash, um, the type of flash card that's installed, and a number of other uh, very useful information. Show running config will display the contents of the current running configuration. Um, you should compare and contrast this with the show startup config command, which will show the startup configuration. So both of these are very useful. Um, for example, show running config I use almost all the time to view how the device is configured right now so I can determine what configuration changes I might need to make. Show startup config, on the other hand, is more useful to, to contrast what changes you may have already made that you have not yet written to memory. Terminal monitor is used to display uh, syslog messages on the terminal directly. Uh, normally you'll use the command term mon or terminal monitor with uh, the debug commands that I'm going to be describing here in the next slide. So now we're going to look at debug commands. These debug commands always start with debug and will allow you to get a lot of detailed information about specific features. Um, so debug commands can be displayed in real time using terminal monitor or you can log them to a buffer. Um, there'll be more on that later. These commands are very CPU intensive because basically what happens, every single relevant packet is sent to the CPU to be displayed on the screen for you or to be logged to the buffer. And so make sure that when you're done using debug commands, you issue the command undebug all. This turns off all debugging on the device. Otherwise, um, I've seen situations arise where if debugging is applied uh, and not judiciously removed, the device will end up crashing completely and become inaccessible. So again, some basic configuration now. Um, so we're now we're not looking at informational commands or administrative commands, but actually configuring the device to operate in a certain manner. So we can get to these commands in configuration mode again. So we have the hostname command. This hostname command changes the name that's displayed at the prompt and how the system responds to certain requests. There are two commands that are used to modify the password that allows you to get into privileged mode with the enable command. The first one is enable secret. The second one is enable password. Now I'm going to compare and contrast these two commands. Basically, enable secret uses what is known as a hash. This hash is a mathematical function that cannot be reversed. So uh, the, your password that you will type is put through a hash function, and this hash is stored in the running configuration. What happens when you use enable secret, um, and you type the enable command to get to privileged mode, the password that it prompts you for will be hashed and then uh, compared with the hash that's in your running config. If these two hashes are the same, it will let you into enable mode. Contrast that to the enable password. The enable password by default is stored in clear text in your configuration. And so, 
uh, if the password is stored in clear text, all it has to do is compare the actual characters of your password with the characters in the running configuration. There is a way to encrypt this password, but this encryption is actually reversible. Again, this is not a hash function, and so this encryption can be reversed, and in fact is easily reversed. There are sites on the internet that do this for free. So to configure lines, again, these are the lines that we were talking about earlier, being the virtual lines, the console lines, and the uh, VTY lines. So to configure, uh, we should specify the lines we want to apply this to. Uh, for example, line console 0 would apply it to the console uh, terminal, or we can apply it to the virtual terminal lines that are used for Telnet and SSH sessions with line VTY. Um, in this case, I've specified line VTY 0, 4, so this configuration will apply to the virtual terminal sessions 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's the first five sessions. Uh, you can configure underneath these VTY lines a password that will be required when the user logs in. You can also specify, uh, in order to actually apply this password, to prompt for this password, you need to specify the login command. So under a VTY line, you will see a password. Uh, the password is stored in clear text by default. Again, uh, you can turn on encryption, and this encryption is reversible. Um, and then to actually apply that password to the VTY line, you'll need to specify login. That just about wraps it up for this first module. Uh, we've covered networking layers, we've covered Ethernet, and we've covered just some basic iOS commands. Again, if you have any questions, I encourage you to ask me. Uh, leave some comments, rate the videos, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next week.